Why do most online stores fail? In this particular video, I'm going to go into the top eight reasons why most online stores fail. I'm going to give you specific examples of the reasons why those store owners fail and what you can actually do about it so you don't make the same mistake and to make your store a success. Hi, I'm Clarice Lin, the ROI doctor who helps small businesses and online stores get more traffic and sales by getting on Google and YouTube page one. <music> If you're an online store owner selling tangible products on Shopify platform, or WooCommerce platform, BigCommerce platform, as long as you are a business that is selling only online, then that means you are an online store owner. You have to be fully aware of that not all online store owners become an overnight success. Most people fail mainly because they are not prepared, they have unrealistic expectations, and they expect once they open the store, they start selling, Everyone's going to come flocking to their store and business is going to be awesome. I have to really reiterate at the start of this video. If you're expecting an overnight success once you open your store, then I would suggest you don't even start your store in the first place. Running an online store is like running any other business, especially at the start where nobody knows about you, nobody knows about your store, nobody knows about your product. You need to put in a lot of effort for your online store to become a success that doesn't happen within a week or two weeks. No, it doesn't. It takes time, it takes months, maybe even years for your business to be really well known. If you're expecting like a quick win and you're expecting some revenue stream coming and doubling your revenue, getting six figures within like one month or two months, that's not realistic. I want to share with you this step by Little Data. They have um, actually surveyed about 2,597 stores in March 2022, and this is what they found. The average revenue per customer is about 89 USD dollar. There are not many statistics and numbers around those online stores that are on different platforms like WooCommerce, which is more of an independent WordPress platform, but there are many numbers around for Shopify store owners and specifically there are about like 1.7 million online stores according to Shopify and not each one of them turns out to be successful. Of course you might hear the occasional success stories which is usually more of the minimum but there's so much written about them that it creates an illusion that every Shopify store owner will become a success. It's not a get rich quick scheme and if you're not prepared to put in the time, the money, and determination to make all of this work, then I suggest you might as well give up. Yeah, I'm sorry to say that, but I feel that's fair warning to you. I don't want you to spend so much time investing on it, like maybe one or two months, and then you realize that this is not something that was going to get you rich suddenly. For an online store to become a success, the store owner, yourself, need to put in a lot of effort, you need to invest a lot of time, and you need certain skill sets so you can build up your business. If you don't have the skills yourself, then of course, obviously, you need to hire the resources, which means you need to have the budget. And if you don't have the time to invest into your business, then you must be prepared to fork out some money. Otherwise, then you have to wait for a longer time to see certain results. The more budget you have and you're getting the right resources to help you, then the more likely you're going to become a success. If you don't have that much budget, you have some budget, you have determination to make it a success, you want to learn everything that is to make your store a success, then that's possible, then your store could eventually become a success. I'm going to share with you exactly which are the top eight reasons why online store fail. So most online store owners might fail at step one, which is the research process. They don't do any research. So they don't really know who will be interested in buying those products and whether they're going to make money. So they don't do any due diligence. They think, okay, there are some people selling these products that maybe if I sell these products, then I'm going to get some money too. I'm going to get rich, which is no, it doesn't happen like that. If there are so many people selling the same items as what you're going to sell, what you're planning to sell, then what makes your products any different from theirs? Why would customers choose to buy from you over the other competitors? This means competition is going to be really tough. So you need to think about who are the people you are really targeting and why would they be interested to buy your products. So on the opposite side of having too many competitors, then maybe you decide to sell something that nobody is selling at all. That could also be a mistake. Is that if nobody is selling it at all, are you sure that people are going to buy? Is this something that people will need? And who are the people who's going to need these products that nobody else is selling? So these are two different 
set of questions that you have to think about when you decide on your niche, when you're going to decide what you're going to sell in your online store. The next reason why online store owners could fail is because they have bad products. Are your products good? Is it of high quality? What are you competing on? Are you competing with other store owners with price or quality? So if you are competing on quality, you want to charge something higher, are your products good? Where do you get your products from? Will people, after they buy it, will they be happy with those products? Are those products going to help them? Are they going to find it useful? Or is it going to break down? So if your products are horrible and it breaks down and people are not happy with it, then obviously, even if at the beginning it sells, it, the sales is just going to die down because you're going to get many bad reviews and people are going to talk about it and want other customers not to buy from you. So when you start your business, make sure your products are good or if your product is something that's really basic and you are working to improve on it over time, ask your customers for feedback. Maybe they like a few features about these benefits of your product, but they feel that your product can become better. They send you some feedback and you work on it and you improve on the next iteration. So you make it better. So people are going to be excited to buy the next iteration of your products as you improve on it. Just like running shoes, every season they will launch like a new model and then they are improving on certain features based on feedback from their existing customers. So similarly for your products, if you are selling bad products, obviously that's not going to work. But if you are providing the basic product and you are improving your products, you have to be upfront with your customers. Tell them this is what it is right now. You will appreciate their feedback so you can improve on your products and produce better products in the long run. So the third reason why online store owners would mostly fail is because you are not creating enough trust. <music> You're not fostering trust. Your shop is not trustworthy. Your shop is not designed properly. You don't have the right colors matched together or you're using different fonts so it looks really messy. Your store is not orderly. People can't really find their things. So people can't really trust what your store is selling. Imagine if you have a new store and that's the first time coming to your store. You're not creating a great impression. You're not helping them to trust you. And for people to want to hand over their money to buy your products, they have to trust your business. They have to trust your products. So you're not doing yourself any favors if your store is not done up properly. And if your store is not fostering the trust needed for customers to make the purchase. So I have a couple of videos that can help you. I have one video right here where I talk about why your website needs improvement. So in the video, I talk about the different areas on how you can improve your website to invoke trust for your shoppers. So the fourth reason is shipping problems. There are customers who expect high quality shipping if they order products. Usually they would expect the products to arrive within like three to five days maximum, unless you have a very special products. If your products are not that unique, or if they don't feel that your products are that unique, then if your products are not going to deliver within a short period of time, then the customers are not interested. Then your customers will go online and search for other alternatives that can enable them to receive the similar products within a shorter period of time. So if shipping is a big issue, if you're struggling to get products delivered to your customers within a short period of time, I suggest you go and explore what are the different ways to help your customers receive their purchases within a shorter period of time. The fifth reason why your store could fail is your store is not optimized. Maybe it's taking like 10 seconds for your store to load. Customers these days expect about three seconds for your store to load so that they can quickly browse through it and they can not find what they want. Time is of the essence, time is money. So you don't want your buyers to kind of wait around and wait for your website to load. So different ways that you can improve on your website speed is to optimize your images. So your images will load really quickly. If you are using a Shopify store, make sure that you disable those apps that you're not using. So you're not increasing the loading speed of your store. If you're using uh, WooCommerce, where it's on a WordPress platform, remember to disable those plugins that you're not using. So compress those images so that they are still clear and visible, but yet they're not going to take a long time to load. Although this might seem trivia but these are important things that all adds up to create the trust for your customers. Reason number six, your customers are not returning. 
most online stores fail because their products are maybe not good enough so the customers are not returning back again or you're not creating reasons for the customers to return to buy more of the products most customers who have bought once from a store would likely return to buy the other products if they really like your brand they really like the products that you have if you have different supplementary products so for example if you're selling like handbags and you are selling it of a certain color maybe you can see if you can produce handbags of other colors as well so there maybe there are people who will be interested to buy the same style of handbag but in different colors to match so these are different ways you can encourage buyers to return to your store and buy more of your products and of course if they really like your products they will also come back and buy it as a gift for their friends or relatives helping to spread the name of your store so make sure you give them reason to return and of course if you have their email address remember to engage it with them via email if you have new products inform them they could be interested to buy because they have bought something from you if you want to know how to craft a successful email marketing strategy to your existing customers you can check out one of my video right here where i talk about email marketing strategy to engage new and returning customers also there are some visitors or browsers who might have arrived on your store the first time and they are not ready to buy it so you want to get their contact details for example like their email so that gives you another reason to reach out to them at a later date for example in a few days time so maybe they might have changed their mind or there's something that they want to get as a gift so they might want to return to your store so any visitors who come to your store you should get their contact details to make sure that you don't lose them and then you can contact them again to make sure that they return to your store to become a potential future customers the seventh reason why online store owners fail that's because they are not doing their math properly in other words you're not doing your product margins properly you have to calculate your profit make sure you take into account what is the cost of the goods what's the cost of shipping how much does it cost to run your shopify store or woocommerce store compare that to the revenue you're getting from your sales if that numbers do not match up or if your cost becomes so much more than the revenue you're earning from your customers obviously that's not going to be sustainable you are doomed for failure so you want to make sure you are doing your math properly and if you want to learn how to manage your budget properly and what you actually need to run your business and have a proper marketing budget for your online store you can check out my other video right here where i talk about the marketing budget for an online store learn how to manage your budget so you are getting traffic and sales to your store a benchmark for you when you go back to look at your um, profit margins is that for your gross product margin ideally you should be getting it between 40 to 50 percent so that gives you enough room for you to deduct off your operating costs and that could hopefully get you within at least five to ten percent of your operating prof profits if you're not getting at least that amount that means that your business is not sustainable and i suggest for you to review your entire business process on how you can make your business sustainable and the eighth reason why online stores fail is because of the lack of marketing <music> most people neglect about the marketing aspect they don't realize that for a business to succeed they have to do marketing 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 so online marketing that could be like getting your products listed for free on google running google ads or running facebook ads or getting listed on bing or collaborating on different influencers getting your business in the news this is how you can get your business to scale up and grow you need to get as many people as possible ideally the people who are most likely to buy your products itself to know about your business and gradually this message should broaden out to more and more people and then eventually you're going to get a steady stream of online visitors to your store who eventually become your customers if you want to learn about the different marketing channels that you can tap into to get more traffic to your store check out my shopify marketing guide that i have created the link is down in the description and pinned comments below i give a bird's eye view of all the different marketing channels online marketing channels that you can tap into and what are the pros and cons and what you need to take note of so you can check that out and then you can decide from there which are the marketing channels you want to tap into to make the most amount of sales if you need personal one-on-one -on -one help to get more traffic and sales for your online store you can also check out the description and pinned comments below so i put out my services page where you can learn how to work with me to get you more traffic and customers and if you enjoyed this video and found it useful remember to give it a like subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss future videos on how to get more traffic and sales by getting on google and youtube page one i'm clarice lynn the ri doctor signing off i'll see you in the next video bye Thank you.